Hi there. This is the fourth in a six part series on how to weave your own market basket. For the full length course with course materials, check out the link in the description below. I have that on my website, textileindie.com. Today, I'll be sharing clips from that course on preparing the rim of your basket. So uh, applying the outer, inner, and the seagrass in your rim. And then in a couple days, I'll be sharing the video on how to lash your rim. So let's get started in creating the rim for your basket. Our final step in doing the basket is to fold the stakes in and then create the rim and lash it. So first, we're going to take the basket Make sure it's completely damp. You want your stakes to be very wet and pliable. And then we're gonna take a look at the outside. So all of the stakes that are on the outside, so on top of your weaver, those stakes are going to get folded over and tucked inside the basket. The stakes that are behind your weaver are gonna get cut off at the top of the last weaver. So it's going to look like this. We'll cut the stakes that are behind. And we'll fold over gently without cracking the reed, the ones that are in front. So I'll start out by folding over those that are in front and then I'll go around and clip all the others off. When you fold them over, you want them to be tight into the top of the last weaver. Okay, and then take your scissors and any reed that's behind the weaver, we're gonna cut off flush with the top of the top weaver. Make sure you're only cutting off stakes that are behind and not those that are in front. These pieces that are in front are gonna fold over and get tucked in and that will hold the basket in place once we put the rim on. Set your scraps aside. Okay, so now we have all of the stakes that are folding over and we need to fold them into the basket and find a length that we want, cut it to that length and then tuck it behind the inside of the weavers. So I'm gonna reach in and clip them to the length I want them to be and then tuck them behind with my straight tip packer. And then shake out your scraps and set those aside. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna take my straight tip packer and set my basket on its side. Use my packer to 
lift up the layers that I'm that I want to tuck this steak under and slowly gently fold it underneath and slide it under those layers so it ends up being hidden behind those weavers I'll keep moving around I'm gonna skip probably the the first row the seagrass and then another row and then lift a few rows after that to tuck under and you want it to be flush with the top of the basket at the top here And I'll use my tool to move the reed so it's hidden, so you can't see it from the front. Shift that over. Now it's hidden. I'm using the thumb of my left hand to guide it in as I use my right hand with the tool To lift up the reeds. There you go, all of the folded over stakes are flush with the top. Just check to see if they're hidden behind the reed. If they poke out a little bit, you can push them over with your tool. Like here, this one's leaning out just a little bit. I'm gonna slide the tool over and hide it. Okay, we're ready to work on the rim. Okay, our next step on this basket is putting on the outer rim. So I'm gonna set this aside and grab a piece of 5 8 inch, 5 8 inch flat oval reed and place this in the water to soak. After your reed has been soaking for five minutes, pull it out of the water. And we're going to take one end and trim it down. So flat oval is the oval on one side and flat on the other. And I want to work off some of the layer on the oval side so that it looks more like a flat reed. And I do that because the ends around the basket are going to overlap like this. And if there's too much bulk, then the width of that gets in the way or starts to look bulky and not attractive. So 
what I do is I take my box knife and I'm going to do about an inch and a half to two inches and trim off a layer. So I'm pretty much trimming off the curved portion of this reed and bringing it down to a flat reed. And always trim away from you so that you don't cut your finger or slice in your hand. Just use good knife safety. So I'm trimming it down and as you can see I've got the curve here and it's starting starting to flatten out. And I keep whittling away at that few more. Okay, and I'm happy with that, so I'll set that aside. And then I'll grab my basket that I'm working with. And this piece is really long and hard to finagle. So I'm going to really quickly wrap this around the outside of the basket and estimate how much I'm going to need. So this rim will be going around the top here. I'm gonna estimate how much I need so that they meet, they overlap here, and trim off the excess. And then I'll set aside this piece and I'll put this back in the water for the inner rim. Set that there. Okay, so then starting with the end you just trimmed, place that onto the outside of your basket. And I'm gonna put the rim actually starting right here. Place this onto the outside of your basket like so, and grab one of your plastic clamps to start out with. And we're wrapping the rim around just this top weaver. So just place it on top of that top weaver. And then use your hands to guide it around the top of the basket, like so. And every once in a while, I usually put a clamp on every side. So each side gets a clamp to hold the rim in place. And then continue guiding it around, just overlapping that top row. Clamp there. And then when I get back to where I started, right here, I will lift up this clamp so that it's out of the way and overlap those two, stick that there, and then trim it. So where I've trimmed here, where I've cut down at this point, ends right here. So I'll trim this excess off right where that whittling down ends. So it overlaps like this. Now, I like to taper off this end so that it's not just flat across. So I snip off the corners and then kind of round it. Snip off the corners again. So just a little bit more rounded there. And then overlap them like so and put that clamp right over top. So there's your outer reed, and we're gonna do a similar sequence for the inner reed. So I'll take my box knife again and trim off a layer. Be careful, the knife is sharp. Notice I'm cutting away from myself. Don't ever cut toward yourself. You can slip, or cut, cut your finger or your hand. Okay, so when I've got about an eighth of an inch there, no, a sixteenth of an inch. <clears throat> Maybe even a thirty-second. I'm gonna stop, and now I'm gonna put the inner rim onto the opposite side of where I put the outer rim. So place that in. Use 
clamp to hold it in place and then loop it in. Now to get into the inside the handle, I'm going to have to bunch up all of this reed and loop it through. Okay, so now once it's in, readjust where you ended or where you started rather. And the oval side should be facing the inside of the basket. So the flat edge is going against the basket. The oval side is going inside. And where I have clamps, I'll lift them off and I'll clamp the both are all three layers, the outer rim, the basket itself, and the inner rim into place. And I want this to be flush up against the basket, fairly tight, because when we go through the lashing process, it will pull it in tighter. And if it's not long enough, it's gonna pull awkwardly and you'll have a gap at the ends. I'll send the reed through again. To the other side of the handle. So you're sandwiching the basket between the two layers of the rim. Now where I started, I'm gonna leave off, do the same thing as I did on the outer rim. I'm gonna cut here about where I ended the carving, or the trimming, cut it right there. I'm gonna clip off corners. And then create a curve. So it's just a little more rounded. I move my clamp so that's in place. So there is the outer rim and the inner rim in place. Now we'll take seagrass and stick it into the channel here on either side of the handle. With the seagrass I'm going to tuck it up against the handle, butt it up against the handle here, clamp it in place. Stick it through the channel here. As you lift off the clamps, the ends here where they're butted up against each other might flip out. So just have a good grip of them on them before you undo the clamps. So then I'm going to lead to the other side of the basket handle. So I'm just doing one side of the basket, butting it up against the handle. And I'm going to leave a little bit of excess, cut it a little bit long. I can trim it later, but I don't want it to be too short. So trim it, we'll cut it. Once we've finished the basket, we'll cut it up here against the handle. But for now, I want some extra room. And here, tuck it in place. Slide it into the channel here. Here, I'm gonna grip the inner rim so that it doesn't fly out and clamp over the reed and over the seagrass. And then again, adding a little bit of excess here, cutting it right up against the handle. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying following along with these videos in creating your own market basket. Again, check the description below for links and resources for all the materials and tools I use in this uh, basket as well as the full length course. And don't forget to come back in a few days for the last two video segments in this series. Thanks for watching.